a state of emergency. I seem to have this phrase repeating in my mind. The work remains the same, so why would I refer to this as a state of emergency? As I contemplate the world around me, I see emergencies of hurricanes, floods, and other extreme disasters. But then I am brought back to Ethiopia, and I am reminded that the people we serve never had a home to begin with. So when they were victims of the flood, or eaten by the water, as they refer to it, they were just happy to be alive. They often lived their entire lives never having enough food, or more than the one piece of clothing that they are wearing at that moment in time. I often think about how every person in the world is our neighbor. This is hard for me to grasp in some cases, but obviously easier when it comes to Ethiopia because I've lived there for nine years now. I want to share with you the life of your neighbor in Ethiopia. As I drive to town, I am never surprised to see someone dehydrated and sleeping naked in the middle of the road. People walk by as if the person is not there. I still remember when we were trying to save the life of our baby Hope. Having found her as a frail two-month-old baby, after I had been told that a woman had given birth to her on the street one night, I thought the process of changing the life of this newborn would come easily. Her mother was mentally ill, and people would just walk by her day after day. They knew the situation was grave. They saw the mother feeding the baby rocks in a bottle mixed with filthy water, but no one stopped. I would bring her food and urge the mother to feed her baby, and people would stop and stare, but not at the situation of this baby. They would stare at the white person who was trying to help the crazy woman. I went to many offices to try to talk to them about this child who became worse every day. Finally, when baby Hope was seven months old, I told the police to just come and see this baby. They said, oh, we don't need to see the baby. We already know her and the mother well. I still urged them to come. When they saw baby Hope, a seven-month-old, seven-pound baby, they turned their faces away in horror. This little baby was so filthy and so malnourished that she was losing her skin. Her mother had a string tied around Hope's neck. This is often given during baptism. Baby Hope was so dirty that the string had grown under her layers of skin. Hope's mother, being unable to care for her child but at the same time reluctant to part with her, finally gave her baby to the police in exchange for 70 cents. Baby Hope was then given to us at Grace Center, where she received her name. Three days later, mere hours after finding out the joyful news that Hope was HIV negative, she passed away. Hope lived her entire life in a state of emergency. All of the women and children who find their way through the gates of Grace Center have been living months, years, and sometimes their whole lives in a state of emergency. Just to give you an idea, the local hospital does its best to assist in the extreme illness that enthralls the people. But this one hospital, with only two oxygen machines, serves a population area of 10 million people. Oftentimes, there will be people breathing their last breaths while laying on one of the hundred or so benches in the outdoor waiting room. If children are needing oxygen, the oxygen machine, with two tubes meant to go into each nostril, will be spread out among all the children needing the oxygen, moved from one nostril to the next, without even cleaning in between children. And on top of it, every child has a different illness. Every time I go to the hospital, my heart breaks for the people, for our neighbors. One time, during a hospital visit, there was a woman weeping over the body of her dead daughter. But she didn't only lose her daughter on that day, she also lost her granddaughter during the labor and delivery. She was weeping, and all she wanted to do was bring her daughter's pregnant yet lifeless body back to her village and have a proper mourning and burial. She didn't have any money. Grace Center was able to give her enough money to cover transportation back to her village. 
Later that day, when I was leaving the hospital, I saw this same woman riding away in the local taxi minibus with her daughter's body tied to the roof rack on the top of the van. A state of emergency. At Grace Center, we offer a release from the life of constantly living in a state of emergency. We have a clean medical facility where we see and care for hundreds of people who might otherwise have died. We have an oxygen machine, ultrasound, and most importantly, the love, prayers, and care provided by our dedicated staff. Children who had never been cleaned will be washed, fed, loved, and cared for. This work will continue with your help. God will see it through and you will continue to be a part of this miracle of saving lives. I'm not at all trying to minimize the destruction of other terrible disasters. But imagine if you never even had a mud house or a cardboard box to sleep in. So many of our mothers live this way. 2,600, the number of people Grace Center supports on a quarterly basis. 23, the average cost a month spent on someone at Grace Center who comes for medical care and food. 40, the amount it takes to send someone to school, cover food and medical, and fully sponsor a child for a month. It takes $20,000 to run Grace Center for a month. That is not much when it comes to the number of people that Grace Center serves. Help spread the word about this state of emergency. Alert the media, call the newspapers and talk shows, radio and TV. We count on you for prayer, for financial support, and to spread the word about Grace Center. Please make donations online at www.gracecenterfoundation.org. That's www.gracecenterfoundation.org.